Hello everyone, my name is Anatoly Kmetyuk. I am a compiler engineer at LAMP. For the past year, I have been working on porting the Ammonite stack from Scala 2 to Scala 3. This stack contains libraries for day-to-day -day operations, such as file system I.O., JSON, HTTP, etc. In this video, I would like to talk in more detail about its possible applications and how you can get started with it. First, we are going to talk a bit about the common philosophy behind the libraries involved, as well as how to set up your project to use these libraries and where to find help and documentation. Second, we are going to cover the following libraries. OSLib, the library for file system operations. MicroPickle, the framework to work with JSON format. MicroTest, the testing framework. Requests, the library to use for HTTP requests. All of the libraries mentioned today are already available for Scala 3. The stack being discussed consists of libraries ported from Python to Scala. For example, OSLib is based on Python's OS library, requests on Python's requests library, etc. The stack is inspired by Python's simplicity. If you need, for example, to read a JSON string, you can do that with one line of code and you can use the result immediately. Many contemporary Scala solutions are rather heavyweight, and to use them, you may need to first understand sophisticated ways to think about software, for example, purely functional approach. And so there is a niche in the ecosystem for simple solutions that do the job. The Ammonite stack covers that niche. Started as a one-man effort, currently the stack has grown to welcome more than five core contributors, maintaining more than a dozen libraries. There is a book, Hands-on Scala Programming, written about the stack. Before we dive deeper into particular libraries, let us have a look into how you can set up your workflow to work with any of them in general, as well as where to find documentation and help. All of the stack libraries live in the com.lihoe organization. For any library, you can find a comprehensive readme detailing how to get started with it in its repo. Getting started with any library in your project is as easy as including an SBT or MIL dependency. And if you need help, you can find it on a Gitter of that library in question. You will find the Gitter link at the top of the library's readme. Let us now have a more detailed look at some libraries of the stack. OSLib is a library that allows you to do common file system operations, such as reading or writing to a file, easily from Scala. Now let us have a look at how we can start using it. Let us first look at how to set it up. First, you need to import an SBT dependency, as shown. Then, following code is an example of how you can read from a file. Reading is performed by a os.read method, which accepts a path to the file that you want to read. It returns a string with the content of the file being read. If you would like to write to a file instead, you can use the write command. This command takes the path to the file to write to, as well as what to write. There are various options available for navigating the file system. It is possible to list all the files directly present in a folder with os.list method. This method only lists files and directories present in the target directory. If you would like to list files recursively, you can use os.walk command. It is also possible to return results in a streaming manner. To do that, you may want to use os.list.stream command. List also accepts the option to sort the results. Walk command accepts also options to give you a finer control over the way that traversal is done in the file system. Besides the ones mentioned, there are also methods for manipulating files and folders, such as checking if a file exists, 
moving a file into another directory, copying a file, creating a symbolic link, etc. You can read more about all of the available methods in the documentation. MicroPickle is a library to work with JSON. It provides you with simple means to, for example, read JSON and write JSON from or to a case class, as well as other useful operations. You can set it up in your project by adding a dependency. You will need one top-level import to start using this library. You can then use it for writing or reading something to a JSON. This method except a thing that can be written to JSON, such as a number, a string, a collection, or a case class. MicroPickle comes with a powerful macro system that teaches the compiler how to read and write case classes to JSON. This allows you to start working with JSON without the need to define anything special for your case classes. You can convert the resulting JSON to various types of JSON values using methods such as error for array, num, string. You can access different members of the value using the apply method on that value. For example, it is possible to access the value of an array by index and a value of an object by the string key. Microtest is a simple test framework powered by macros aimed at making testing in Scala easy and intuitive. To get started with it, you need to add it as an SBT dependency and declare it as a test framework to be used. To define a test suite, you first need to add one top-level import of microtest. You can then define a test suite as follows. It must reside in an object that extends the test suite class. The object must have a test value that is constructed via the test's method. Inside this method, you can specify the tests. A test is considered as failed if it throws an exception, successful otherwise. There are built-in methods that you can use to test various conditions from your test suite. For example, an assert method compares two variables, but with a twist. If an assert fails, the error message will display the name of the failed variable and its actual value. It is also possible to use an arrow in place of an assert method. The framework will provide extra information for rapid debugging. Tests can be nested inside other tests. This serves two purposes. First, to give the tests a logical structure. Second, to provide shared code in a top-level test and reuse it in the nested tests. For every nested test, the fixture code will be run separately, which means, for example, that modifications to a var done by one test will not be visible from another test. There are also checkers available for testing concurrent code. For example, eventually tests if a predicate holds true eventually, possibly after some concurrent code got executed. Continually, on the other hand, tests whether a predicate holds true at all times, possibly in parallel with some concurrent code being executed. Sometimes it might be necessary to check if a certain code compiles at all especially these days when most of the Scala libraries have a requirement to be type safe, to show errors on compile time. Such libraries would greatly benefit from the ability to test whether a certain code compiles or doesn't compile. This is exactly why the compile error method is present in microtest. You can pass it a certain piece of code, and if it does not compile, you are going to get an error message as a string. Requests is a simple HTTP library for Scala. Its purpose is to enable you to issue an HTTP request easily. You can get started with requests by adding a dependency into your project. Issue of a simple request is straightforward. Every HTTP method has a dedicated factory in this library. It is possible to pass parameters to requests issued as follows. In case of post requests, 
you can also specify data to be sent to the server. It is possible to obtain the information related to the response, such as content, the status code, and the headers. It is a good idea to use this library with MicroPickle with the services that communicate in JSON. Here is an example of how you can combine requests with MicroPickle to send JSON data to a remote API. Note how you can pass streaming data to that method. It is possible to configure a request with custom headers, a timeout, custom cookies, and more. The library is highly customizable, so if you are interested in using it, you can find more information about options available in the documentation. We have just seen some of the libraries from the Ammonite stack, but many more libraries are available. I invite you to discover them at the GitHub organization of the stack. Thank you for watching, and I hope that the Ammonite stack will help you on your journey discovering Scala. Thank you.